Well, Harry Julius was the, uh, the, the first person that created these um, short animated films. He, at the time, he was a, a, a very accomplished, very famous um, theatrical caricaturist. A lot of his drawings he would accompany theatre reviewers to plays and things like that and draw what he saw in the theatre. But in 1915, of course, we uh, entered a war that was clearly not going to be over by Christmas, like they'd promised us, and he was contracted to um, come up with a series of um, short animated films, about two, two and a half minutes, um, and a lot of them uh, had a, a kind of a propaganda yeah. um, mm. basis to them, and and, um, and some of them had kind of social commentary too, which is the the one we're looking at now. How, this, this, has, this has a hilarious ending, too, very iconic ending. The and and the, the, his sense of design, as as an artist and as a designer, his his sense of design kind of often started with pure shapes. I mean, some of the some of the the, the, the things with this dress on, is, you know, it starts as one parallelogram stacked on top of another, if you if you know what I mean, and 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 but his his films um, covered these sorts of social issues. They covered um, messages that the government of the day wanted to get out to the people about the war in Germany, um, and the they were then cut into newsreels. They they became part of a, a newsreel, which uh, was was screened before the movies of the day. A, a very rudimentary to, to all of us, you know, used to yeah. a much more complicated animation now, but it must have been a very big deal at the time. Oh, at the time it was a very mm. big deal. And, and as the first animated images that anybody had ever seen in Australia, um, you know, the reactions were really, really interesting. And you have to go back too to a time when people, in, in those days, people hadn't really decided exactly what cinema was going to be. We know what cinema is now, we understand the rules, we know how films work, we know the language. But in those days, the, the, you know, the, the jury was still out on what cinema might be. It might be just moving pictures, it might be you know, forms of moving portraiture, it, it could be art. It's not everybody assumed that cinema would be a narrative mm. form like it is now. And from that Harry Julius work, those black and white images, of the black and white animations, mm. where, where did the industry move from there? Then, essentially, I mean, the, the next really big part of the, the, the story of the history of Australian animation um, arrives with Eric Porter. Yes. And Eric Porter, I, th I think it's fair to say, I don't think there's any doubt really that he was pretty much the, the, the most important person in terms of the history of Australian animation. Now, he was an animator almost from the day he began work. He was a very good cartoonist and, and uh, you know, worked with cartoonists of the day and, and got the animation bug very early, wound up working with uh, a, a cartoonist called um, John Banks who had a um, very famous cartoon strip at the time but That's he right. opened his own studio in the early 30s and pioneered everything. He was, he was a pioneer in terms of getting um, colour into um, animation and into cinema and he created, I mean we're looking at now one of the most iconic you know, early TV ads and early early ads that you have. That's Bertie the Bertie the aeroplane there, which was um, uh, used to promote um, uh, aeroplane jellies. Yeah. Um, he also uh, went on. He was known as the Disney of Australia, and he had no problems with that term. He went to America and, and um, saw a lot that fascinated him about the way that Disney made their films. He, in many ways, his biggest claim to fame, at least you know, in my world is that he was also the person that uh, directed the first animated feature film in Australia this called... This is Marco Polo versus the Red Dragon. Yeah, Marco Polo Jr. versus the Red yeah. Dragon. And uh, I mean, and you can see kind of, that, that's, mm. that's a little clip of it there, you can see, you know, it's the international kind of influences. Mm. You can see the detail and the wonderful colours and the very fluid animation um, mm. that's involved in all of that. Now, the, the really, really great news um, is that Although there's, there's a limited number of, of film prints, 35 mil film prints of those that have been, you know, held with great care by the National Film and Sound Archive, um, because of what we're doing in the Animation Festival this year and because of what the, the NFSA does in general, they've gone ahead and they've restored um, that iconic animated feature film. Oh, really? And only just finished. It was a, a major, I mean, restoring any film is a very, very significant um, piece of work to, to have to pull off. And we're going to be um, premiering that restored version at the Animation Festival um, next week. And that's one of the most exciting things that I've come across in my 15 years running the Animation Festival. Absolutely thrilled to, you know, to do that. Excellent. Breaking animation news on yeah, Breakfast indeed, News. Thanks indeed. very much. Mm. Now, Percival Pitts, one of the more latter-day cartoons. How, how significant is this one? Oh, I think, if you ask me, it's got Academy Award nomination written all over it. Um, it's 
beautiful. It's, uh, I mean, you're seeing a piece of it there. It's, uh, it's the opening film in our Australian Showcase program at the festival. Uh, it's all puppet animation. Um, it was made, what they, generally it was made in camera, in other, in other words, I mean, that, that scene there with the swirling of the wine glass, to, to have a liquid um, swirl like that with stop motion is, is just an act of technical genius on behalf of the, the two filmmakers, um, John Lewis and Jeanette Goody. Um, beautiful film. It has a, a sort of a universal appeal. Yeah. It's something that, that kids will love, but also not so kidsy that the, the adults are just sitting there um, kind of putting up with it. I mean, it's a really, really wonderful film, and it's, um, it's getting a lot of festival screenings and a lot of notice overseas.